Hi everyone. So today in this video we're going to be talking about the Cauchy Schwarz inequality. So we'll talk about what the inequality is, where the equality case holds and then obviously we're going to see a problem based upon it. So yeah, let's just get started. So this is problem number 2 from the Indonesian Math Olympiad in the year 2008. And in this video we're going to be seeing the Cauchy Schwarz inequality, which is going to be the takeaway of the video, then the AMG inequality then we have the book sessions for National Math Olympiads and at the end a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we want to prove that for all reals x comma y, this given inequality holds, right? So before we maybe jump onto this problem, let me just introduce you to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, okay? Cauchy-Schwarz. What is this? So it says that for all AIs and BIs that are reals, so all AIs and all BIs are reals, um, the following inequality is satisfied a1 square plus a2 square all the way up to an squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared all the way up to bn squared is greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus all the way up to an bn whole squared right this is a very neat and elegant inequality that is satisfied for all reals, AIs, comma, AIs and BIs. And you just kind of have to remember it, I guess, because <laughs> it's used a lot. And I think it's also helpful to discuss the equality case. So equality case is obviously where the equality is hold, not the inequality. So this inequality holds in general for AIs and BIs real numbers, but the equality case happens when a1 over b1 is equal to a2 over b2 is equal to this this is goes all the way up to a n over b n so all of these quantities are equal to one another then the equality holds not the inequality in general though the inequality holds okay great so how can we maybe use this to our advantage in a problem so you see we have this one plus root x and one plus root y over here and obviously the squared terms so when I see certain squared quantities, one of the first few things that comes to my mind is Cauchy Schwartz. Because it is so often used, especially when you're dealing with squares, that it's, it's, it's kind of like a straight away guess. So I want to get a configuration similar to 1 plus root x whole squared, and I want to get a configuration similar to 1 plus root y whole squared. How do we really do that? Well, it's actually very simple. I'm going to take a1 as 1, b1 as root x, I'm going to take a2 as 1 and b2 as 1. Now, from the cauchy schwarz inequality, I know that a1 squared plus a2 squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared will be greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 whole squared. And what happens when I do that? Well, when I do that, I'll get a1 squared plus a2 squared, which is 2, b1 squared plus b2 squared, which is 1 plus x, right? It is greater than or equal to 1 plus root x whole squared, which is amazing. This is amazing. Now, by symmetry, by symmetry, I can write 2 times 1 plus y is greater than or equal to 1 plus root y whole square. You can just say this by symmetry, or you can just swap this root x with root y and then again apply the Cauchy Schwartz. It's, it's the same thing essentially. Now, 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 this is great. But in the original question, I have 1 over 1 plus root x whole squared. So if I want to find 1 over 1 plus root x whole squared, I have to flip the sign of the inequality, right? So this becomes greater than or equal to 1 by 2, 1 plus x. And similarly, 1 by 1 plus root y whole squared, this becomes greater than or equal to 1 by 2 times 1 plus y. Okay, great. Well, then what next? I think it's pretty easy. Now we just add those two quantities. So when I just add them, I'll get 1 plus root x whole squared plus 1 by 1 plus root y whole squared, 
will be greater than or equal to 1 by 2 and this entire quantity inside right 1 by x plus 1 plus 1 by y plus 1 okay great now now i can just use the amj inequality actually so just to kind of remind you a plus b by 2 is greater than or equal to root ab this is effectively the amj inequality for two numbers and here we have just two numbers on the right hand side so i'm just going to use that i'm going to take a as 1 by x plus 1 and b as 1 by y plus 1 and then apply this amgm so what i'll get is 1 by x plus 1 plus 1 by y plus 1 divided by 2 is greater than or equal to 1 by square root of x plus 1 times y plus 1 right but if you actually notice the thing on the left hand side is actually less than or equal to this right so i can effectively write 1 by 1 plus root x whole squared plus 1 by 1 plus root y whole squared is greater than or equal to 1 by square root of x plus 1 times y plus 1 and let me just label that as number 1 so that's one result that we have obtained till now well what next so we have this 1 by root x plus 1 root y plus 1 on the right hand side but how does this lead us to our original goal our original goal is to find a form like this on the right hand side right 2 divided by x plus y plus 2 so hmm how can i generate this 2 divided by x plus y plus 2 how is this form sort of going to be generated on the right hand side well i kind of get the idea that i will have to use the amgm but how exactly so first of all notice that 2 divided by x plus y by 2 inverse is what like x plus y plus 2 divided by 2 right and that can be very conveniently written as x plus 1 plus y plus 1 divided by 2 which is great because then this can be written as x plus 1 plus y plus 1 divided by 2 is greater than or equal to square root of x plus 1 times y plus 1 so kind of using the emgm over here now if i flip them over i'll get 2 divided by x plus 1 plus y plus 1 will be less than or equal to 1 divided by the root of x plus 1 y plus 1 or in other words 2 divided by x plus y plus 2 will be less than or equal to 1 divided by root x plus 1 y plus 1 and if i just label there as equation number 2 you will actually see that we have reached our answer why because from 1 and 2 what do i have 2 divided by x plus y plus 2 is less than or equal to 1 divided by root x plus 1 times y plus 1. This is from equation number 2. But from equation number 1, from equation number 1, we know that 1 by root x plus 1 y plus 1 is less than or equal to this quantity. And what is that quantity? 1 by 1 plus root x whole squared plus 1 by 1 plus root y whole squared right so effectively 2 divided by x plus y plus 2 is less than or equal to 1 by 1 plus root x whole squared plus 1 by 1 plus root y whole squared and that is what we had to prove right so we proved the given result and this obviously holds for all x comma y belonging to real numbers or you can basically say that x and y need to be greater than zero because otherwise um the thing inside the square root cannot be negative right but uh, okay yeah that was that was a good demonstration i guess and hope you learned something from it because the cauchy shorts inequality is arguably the most used inequality after the amgm and like we showed over here it can very well be used alongside the amgm to solve some uh, really nice problems and inequalities so yeah let's hope you learned something from that Okay, so moving on, we have certain book sessions on National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Gell, Functional Equation by Venkata Chala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharigan, Elementary Number Theory by Sierpinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and Combinatrix by Bruali. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem, and this is, I believe, a very direct application to Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So it says that real numbers A, B, C, and D 
satisfies the given condition a square plus b square is equal to c square plus d square okay and find the maximum value of this given expression right the idea is to kind of use cauchy schwartz and maybe give it a try and if you're able to solve it let me know until then i'll see you in the next video thank you very much and bye bye the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one on one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com